number 28 of the USL Championship season as we welcome you to Pioneer Stadium. Oakland Roots SC matching up with FC Tulsa here in the Western Conference this evening. Hi everybody, alongside Ricky Lopez Espin, I'm Drew Casey. Delighted you've joined us for USL Championship here on ESPN Plus as we take a look at the Western Conference table. Two teams in similar positions right around that playoff line. Ricky, Oakland at seven. And checking in a little bit further, FC Tulsa. We'll talk about them on the Eastern Conference side, but, but Oakland needs some points here today. I think if you're Noel Delgado, it's a must. Big three points here up for grabs at home. You look at the last five games, one win out of the last four, three losses on the trot here, but you're at home against an Eastern Conference row. So how do you start the first 10 to 15 minutes here for Noel Delgado? Because this is a massive opportunity to keep climbing up this Western Conference table. FC Tulsa talk about it a little bit later. They're in ninth in the Eastern Conference, but let's talk about a couple of guys to watch. Johnny Rodriguez for Oakland, 11 goals. I think he's going to be the main man for Noel Delgado and the Oakland Roots here tonight, whether it's holding up the ball, whether it's popping in the hole, but also spinning in behind and running the channels, stretching opposition, because we've seen John Rodriguez grow from year to year, but now 11 goals on the season. You want him to stay high. You want him to be clinical, but the question for Noel Delgado and the Oakland Roots is what does the service look like into John Rodriguez because when he's confident he's asking a lot of questions and he's going to need to be very good for the Oakland Roots here at home. On the other side, FC Tulsa making the trip. Philip Goodrum similarly leading the team in goals. He's got nine. I think he's just ruthless. He wants to get on the end of things. He's a hard worker. He does everything well for Blair Gavin since coming over from Memphis. He really injected a lot of energy and a lot of quality for FC Tulsa on that front line. So what does his relationship look like for the players underneath him, whether it's Marcus Epps, whether it's Yosef, whether it's Blaine Ferry. But Philip Goodrum needs to be very good, very confident, asking all sorts of questions for this open route in that back line. Oakland. FC Tulsa coming up. We are in the midst of week number 28 of USL Championship. The points just mean a little bit more this time of the year. Starting lineups, the opening touch when we return right after this on ESPN+. Plus. It doesn't matter how hard you play, practice, or compete, as long as you do it together. That's why Anthem Blue Cross and Oakland Roots teamed up and took on food insecurity empowered all athletes to improve physical health and expanded health and wellness resources available to the residents of Oakland and the Bay Area. We're committed to continuing our work to improve the lives and health of our community together. Visit oaklandroots.com anthem to learn more. There's satisfaction in sacrifice. In spilling blood. Sweat and tears in knowing that you left it all on the floor and never threw in the towel. Well, except to clean up the mess. Giving it all for your team is worth every drop. Medela, brewed for fans with a fighting spirit. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. They're still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. <laughs> Presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross, by UCSF, and by Modelo. We are approaching the opening kickoff between Oakland and FC Tulsa. Let's take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. Anthem is transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. We take a look at Oakland Roots first, Ricky. And I think if you're Nels Legato, it's all about fluidity. You might see Nabil Hackshaw pop on that back line, but all comes down to Matsoso and Donaciano in the center of the park. What does that relationship look like? How good can they be at dictating tempo to get Rodriguez, Sedeno, and Mafeka 
in the spots that they want higher up the field. But you talk about players knowing their role from front to back for Oakland Roots. It's a big, massive three points out for grabs here at home in front of your home faithful. Oakland 1-4-0 in its last five matches. Meanwhile, on the other side, FC Tulsa 1-3-1 and in its last five. So struggling as well as we see the 11 for head coach Blair Gavin. I think we talked about the player at the open, Philip Gertrude. He's going to be number 10. He's going to stay high and occupy the two center backs. So it comes about the players on the wide areas. Milo Yosef, Mark Deceps, what is how quickly can they get in a rhythm to get on the ball and ask a question to test the shape and get in beyond this back line of the Yoko Roots? And you have Nate Worth and you have Blaine Fair. They're going to dictate tempo centrally, move the ball from left to right because you know Blair Gavin wants to be methodical in the way that he builds up. So how do you weather the storm in the first 10 to 15 minutes for the visitors here? Oakland and FC Tulsa getting set to go here this evening. Oakland checking in seventh in the Western Conference. We saw the table, 40 points, plus three in a row in a shorter stretch as well. He's had one and four in the last five, so in need of some, some big time points. The same for Tulsa outside looking in. Ninth place in the Eastern Conference. We are just about set to go. Appreciate you joining us. Pioneer Stadium, Cal State East Bay, and here we go. We are underway, week 28 of USL Championship. Oakland, of course, in the traditional black-based uniforms, and it is FC Tulsa in the visiting white kits. Alongside Ricky Lopez, Espin, the rest of our fantastic USL Championship broadcast team, I'm Drew Casey, and thanks for joining us here this evening already. Half a slate of games in the book, couple last night, couple earlier today on the East Coast. We'll, of course, keep you apprised to everything throughout tonight's show. Talked a little bit about it, Ricky, earlier, but what are you looking for in this one tonight? I think it starts with the home side, the open roots. You just need a reaction if you're Noel Delgado. We talked about last time out at Las Vegas, giving them their second win on the season. Your center back goes off with a concussion, so you have to change things just a tiny bit more. But now Neville Hackshaw, he's going to play centrally. Watch out. Here's an opportunity. Epps is through, dropping back. Clearance has to be made, ball is not out. Thought it was going over the byline, but no, not the case. Ryan Tamakis thought so, but it did not. Nearly a golden opportunity early for Epps. And he's gonna be a player that's gonna ask a lot of questions to get on the ball for FC Tulsa on this wide area. A player that likes to be direct and vertical in his movement, very crafty, very comfortable on the ball. But if you're Blaine Berry, you take that little bit of extra effort to get on the end of it, it's 1-0 FC Tulsa. We're going back to what we we're just talking about, Drew. I, th I think for the Oakland Roots and if you Hackshaw, he needs to be the leader of that back three centrally, and then Donaciano and Metzoso. That balance centrally to win that midfield battle it needs to be very good. As one stays, the other one goes. Because on the other side, that middle three, Eric Bird, Blaine Ferry, Nate Worth, for Blair Gavin have formed a very good relationship over the last couple games. Take a look at the injury report for tonight's game, brought to you by UCSF Health and UCSF and Benioff Children's Hospitals. And it's always a good line to see no injuries reported this time of the year. And there is a couple of players out for Oakland. And one of the ones that maybe is big, Tarek Morad, last week, a, kind of a scary head injury. He is doing better, hoping to start the return process in the concussion protocol at the moment, but good to hear that he is he is doing better. It was a, a tough moment to watch last week. It's just underway, there is the stalwart goalkeeper for Oakland, Paul Blanchett. Most saves in the league, 98. He could get to 100 tonight. I always toggle with the decision, is that a good thing for the Oakland Roots or is it the kind of a, a thing that if you're Noah Delgado, you scratch your head. But one thing is for certain that Paul Blanchett, he's been spectacular between the sticks for the Oakland Roots, just keeping them in games. Big save after big save. He has a very big challenge to go against Marcus Sepps and Philip Goodrum, two attack-minded players for the visitors here. Yeah, certainly two of the tops in the league, not just on FC Tulsa's side. This will go back to Blanchett. Outstanding player throughout the year, according to his head coach, Noah Delgado. He spoke earlier in the week. Trying to go over the top, might have some English here. But it is the keeper on the other side for FC Tulsa. Michael Nelson's first touch and out to center. And also you look at the Oakland Roots. Two players that were out with international duty 
last time against Las Vegas Lights. So bringing in Tamakas on this near side as that wing back, him and Sedeno have formed a very good relationship. So look out for Ogre Roots playing on this near side. Of course, an opportunity here at home for Oakland as well. Relatively even splits, actually maybe a, a little bit better results-wise on the road. You calculate the points. Oakland's 4-4-5 four, four, and five here at home, 7-6-2 and two away. But really looking to find a surge, have fallen in the table down to seventh in the West. We're threatening to be maybe top two or three a couple of weeks ago. But now it's the playoff line conversation, and the season is winding, winding down. Tamakis there in the direction of Rodriguez, who we highlighted at the top of the show. The work is Oakland. So-so. That wide area for Tamakis. Couldn't get it back to Rodriguez. You have the ultimate flexibility with a drinks and seats three pack. Each pack includes three. Any game ticket voucher is valid for any 2023 regular season home match. In addition, each voucher also includes two complimentary drinks, either beer or soft drinks, which will be available to pick up on game day. For more information, visit us at oaklandrootssc.com slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. on the front foot, long range here. Easy to be handled by Michael Nelson. Just see how smart Cedeno is as the Oakland Roots elect to play, for, play direct. Second balls are gonna be extremely important. Now that support system underneath, Johnny Rodriguez needs something spectacular from that distance to beat Michael Nelson. I do think it's gonna be a big challenge for Blair Gavin, just essentially for the youngster. Nate Worth, him and Eric Bird. What does that relationship look like? When the ball gets by you, you have to have the ability just to turn around and double down to do your defensive duties because you have Lindo, Mafeka, and Jaseel Sedano that are very good at playing in between lines. You mentioned Blanchett leads the league in saves. Guess who's second? Michael Nelson. And again, the same <laughs> question can be asked, Ricky. But those are the statistics. Two really talented keepers who have been certainly tested throughout this season. Both teams looking to return to form over the top for FC Tulsa and Epps on the run. Lamenta able to come over and help out defensively. Lane Ferry, 22-year-old from South Lake, Texas. His 19th start of the year. FC Tulsa to further accentuate the criticalness of this game. Also has played one more game disadvantageous to many of the clubs in its area in the East. Of course, had to make the trip out to Tulsa right in that Center of the nation. It's about the same distance when you go either way. This begins a three-game road swing for FC Tulsa as well, so it is not going to be easy climbing down the stretch at Charleston, at Pittsburgh the next two weeks. Two really tough places to play against two really talented teams. Oakland, on the other hand, the exact opposite. This is the first of three straight here at home at Pioneer Stadium. Off the right side for the first time. Most of trying to keep and could not. You just see nine minutes in, just the little triangles that are being formed for FC Tulsa between the lines. Nate Worth, he's drawn back right in front of that back three just to dictate tempo and move the ball from left to right. So you have Blaine Fear and Eric Bird a line higher. Just go man with man with Donaciano and Lapo Matsoso. So defensively, a lot of communication needs to be had for the open route that passing players off because there's a lot of movement for the visitors here in the early going. The speed, little area, but not enough of it for Donaciano there. 
whistle behind the play as or just after the ball was sent ahead. Got things rolling just after 7 o'clock here locally. Nice night. Just about anything, including taking in this one. This will be the home field again next season for Oakland, announcing a couple weeks back that for the upcoming 2024 season, it will be right here at Pioneer Stadium. We're continuing in the process to build the club's own soccer stadium adjacent to the Coliseum in East Oakland on the Malibu lot. There's some good news this week, this past Tuesday, that resolution successfully moved through the City Council Committee and will appear before the entire City Council this coming Tuesday. And if that passes, you get a lot closer to breaking ground. Still other steps as well, environmental impact and other things. This one sent in for Tulsa. Epps towards goal, and that one's going to find the back of the net. How about that? Philip Goodrum, the two we've highlighted, connect. And there's the opening goal in the 11th minute here this evening on the road for FC Tulsa. It's been a dream start for Blair, for Blair Gavin and FC Tulsa here. They've been dictating tempo. It's been all one-way traffic. But when you get Marcus up to time and space, just to pick up his head, it's all about movement from Philip Goodrum. Playing off the shoulder of Neville Hackshaw between him and Danny Barbier. There's no communication, there's no rotation on the back line whatsoever. And Paul Blanchett gets caught in no man's land. Does he go, does he stay flat-footed? That man's always gonna make you pay. Philip Goodrum, he gets his 10th goal on the year. And Tulsa leading here on the road in Oakland. So a good settle at the start. Getting things rolling and a one to nothing advantage. The two leaders in respective categories. Goal number 10 for Goodrum, assist number five for Epps. And just like that, FC Tulsa in prime position early on in this one. I do think if you're Noel Delgado, you're going to be looking around saying, number one, where was the pressure on the ball? You can't give any sort of real estate to this FC Tulsa side on that front line to pick up their head and find the pass from about 25 yards in. Watch out here. Opportunity to equalize quickly, four on three, long range, bobble, and then covered by Michael Nelson. Had the numbers, but took the shot straight on. I think it's a bit selfish in the end from Donaciano. Has a plethora of options on either side of him. Alexis shoot from distance. Like I said earlier, you need something spectacular to beat Michael Nelson from about 25 yards out. It's a great ball. Off the line, reading it, Blanchett. Trying to get back towards center. Get a whistle there. Just going back to that breakdown defensively for the Oakland Roots. If you're Daniel, you have to be a bit tighter to Marcus Sapp because he's a player that you 100% highlight in the team talk. You can't let him get confident. And then it's all about the communication on the weak side for the Oakland Roots. If you're Danny Barbier, you have to be barking at Neville Hackshaw to drop a, a line deeper and be in sight of Philip Goodrum. That doesn't happen. And then Pablo and Che, you need to be a bit more decisive than stepping off your line. You can't hot on your heels, not even a courtesy dive. And FC Tulsa and Blair Gavin have to be very pleased with how they started this game. Amenta opts to go to the build from the back. Great ball. Good awareness. Strong turn. And taken away. Referee says, everybody up, we play on. Just joining us, Goodrum scoring from Epps a few moments ago. 10th minute. Good combination between those two. Gonna lead the way for this FC Tulsa charge and return to form. A tough run over the last five, just one, three, and one. Wins, loss, draw. Taken down here, and that'll be a whistle. Sedeno and a free kick coming for FC Tulsa. They want to get right back to it quickly.
Rucci up ahead, the 28-year-old from Spain, previously playing in the Finnish League before coming over to FC Tulsa. Eric Bird involved off the right side, but taken away by Oakland. Center cut for Tamakis. Drops the drop back. 20th game, 17th start for Tamakis on the season. Either one of these teams in any sort of playoff clinching scenario or elimination scenario, we're gonna start to see those fast and furious each week. Teams just looking to concentrate on each of their own efforts. Over the top, whistle, and let's see. And look out, a lot extra. I don't think the referee saw. Memo Diaz goes down. Keegan Hughes as well. Let's see, this might be an assistant referee conversation. Nelson is over. Egan Hughes has picked up the ball. Let's take another look here and see, and we'll watch it to the end. It is a foul here on Memo Diaz. He just backs up into Milo Yosef, and then Hughes just comes over across. Memo definitely tries to make the most of it and try to catch. He's in a lot of trouble. There's just no need for the outside back of FC Tulsa to lunge in like that. So you know how clever Memo Diaz is, trying to get him and ask some questions of that center referee. Melvin Rivas there. And yeah, no card shown. Certainly the attention may be a bit elsewhere. Hughes catches a break. Only one yellow card this year his fifth game and a whistle here the physicality has really picked up and here we go here comes the yellow Lutrov is down now Sedania is coming over you got to be careful let's take another look here it's something you, you don't want to see if you're no, Delgado, and I think that's extremely harsh. She had to foul. Yellow card worthy, that's where I have my confusion. No, Delgado, Napa with so a player that you rely heavily on to do the defensive side of the ball on a yellow card, 17 minutes here. So it's a big challenge for the young man in terms of his discipline and his positioning. Chipped back in, Oakland controlling. But only momentarily, Epp sends another one in. Curling and wide. Matsoso, that's his team leading eighth yellow card on the season. And you certainly hope that that did not play into the decision making. But as Ricky mentioned, that was a tough one. It goes in the book officially as a yellow. I also don't think it's a coincidence that Philip Goodrum is involved in it. You know anything about the striker for FC Tulsa, he's just so good at riding the line but frustrating his opposition to make them make rash decision. So something to keep an eye on, on is just that front line, that battle between him, Neville Hackshaw, Emmer Clementa, Danny Barbier. Philip Goodrum is a handful. He's a nightmare to play against. Bird there was called for just the common whistle foul. Goodrum has just been fantastic this season. Very experienced player that FC Tulsa Really leans on and expected to do so down this stretch run. He was, of course, acquired via transfer from Memphis just before the end of May on May 22nd. To his own credit, Goodrum has 10 yellows. That's the third most in the league. Look it under your skin. Sometimes <laughs> we'll pay the price. One shot apiece for both sides. And it is FC Tulsa having capitalized. 
Lots of whistles here. Stop and start, red light, green light. team that is looking to avoid missing the playoffs narrowly for the second consecutive season. Last year finished eighth, top seven, made it a year ago. To be fair, though, it was a large margin between seven and eight. Missed out by 12 points last year. Good ball up ahead here from Epps. It's an onside play. This is Bird moving in. Eric Bird, left foot behind the two onrushers, and Bird can't believe it as he's still Lies on the turf here. Clean tackle one. Oakland Roots have it back. Advantage here. Ball reversal for Tamakis. A whistle will get a foul here at Oakland is going to have an opportunity. Take a look at that Oakland, that Tulsa opportunity. Marcus Epps is just so good because he requires so much attention. It's off the ball running and he has the vision. But I do think if you're Eric Bird here, it's that second touch that just closes down the ankle that makes that pass for you. If you take that touch towards Paul Blanchett, you have a clear opportunity to ask questions and put it on target. It's an opportunity that goes begging for FC Tulsa. But now if you're the Oakland Roots, you're looking at this very dangerous position as Linda Mafeka and Sedan, you're standing over the ball. Just want to put this ball in a dangerous area and cause chaos between that back line and Michael Nelson. Yellow card did come out there. Blaine Ferry, the guilty party. Mafeka. And Diaz now lining it up. Diaz launches in. Caught a big head there of Keegan Hughes, and it will be a corner kick coming for Oakland Roots. And this corner kick is powered by East Bay Community Energy. East Bay Community Energy providing green power at low rates. Visit ebce.org to find out more. Opportunity here, Knox. Corner in for Oakland. Out of immediate danger. Able to hold and get it back to the middle third. So, so here on a yellow card from a few minutes ago. Just past the halfway mark of this. Opening 45, we're in the 23rd minute. Appreciate you joining us from Pioneer Stadium alongside Ricky Lopez Espin, the rest of our USL team. I'm Drew Casey. Nice night here in Oakland and the greater area. Ball over the top, Oakland looking to equalize, chasing the game here slightly. In and out of that left and right foot, tied up. Sedanio couldn't control. Now he runs onto it, wanting to kick it first time. But as this ball gets rolled into it, just takes an awkward bounce off the turf. First touch lets him down. But I do think there is a lot of Success to be had if you're the Oakland Roots, just playing between lines with Linda Mafeka and Sedanio. Taking a little bit to get going here, but once they do, when they get on the same page, there's a lot of creativity and fluidity for Noel Delgado. Sedanio tries again, but slide and essentially a catch with the legs defensively.
Takeaway. Oakland Roots is in. Slotted on through a bit too strong. Looking for Rodriguez. We highlighted at the top of the show. Sixty-five degrees here at Pioneer Stadium. A little bit of humidity, a little sticky, but it is certainly not the summer anymore. Winding down, although we've had some, we have had some weather delays around the league today. But a perfect night here. No weather delays here, Drew. No weather delays. Just joining us, Philip Goodrum scoring in the 10th minute from Marcus Epps. The two have been doing it quite well this season. And a prime example of the connection. That was way back in the 10th minute. A little off balance to Danio, but good to keep with the triangle. Maveka. Siano taken down here. Let's see if we get a whistle. No, play on. One back. Here comes the run to Bacchus. Inside, controlled. And again, just off the foot of Cedeno. Second time we've seen that in the last few minutes. Back the other way, Goodrum, head of steam. Waiting for reinforcements. the point of attack out wide right now for Bird. Inside, but the flag is up. Heck of a save, though, and effort made there. Not going to count for Blanchett, but maybe some confidence nonetheless. Just been so impressed with Nate Worth. Number 18, the youngster for FC Tulsa playing centrally. So many times when he gets on the ball, the game just seems to slow down. Picks a right pass at the right time with the right amount of weight. He picks the pocket of Cedeno. First look is always forward, and that's why you start to see this transition moment for FC Tulsa. Little things like that playing well beyond his years. And I do think Blair Gavin talking extremely high of the young man that he's been massive since coming into his own. Oakland Roots. Down one nil here to FC Tulsa. Really, really exciting news this week. The Oakland Roots community. You can now become a part owner of Oakland Roots and Soul SC now by heading to wefunder.com slash Oakland. Fans 18 and up can join the ownership group for as little as $100 today. And at last check this morning, the campaign had raised $1.7 million out of the $2 million goal. That's in less than a week, just a couple of days old for that campaign. So great to see the support of the community. I think you look around USO Championship, Jew, it's very difficult to find a community that cares more about their team than the Oakland Roots. And I think you talk to Nozo God a week in and week out throughout this 2023 campaign, the importance of just getting a home playoff game, how they want it for the community because they know that can actually be that 12th man on the field to push them over that line to get them into a deeper run of the playoffs. Sitting sixth right now, still ways to go, but that is the goal just to pay back about the community and the environment that they've created and just how in tune the Oakland Roots are. That's a very, very tight Western Conference, the live table at the moment, or I should say the table with results that have already been completed earlier today in the mix. But first, over the top, this is an onside play. Opportunities coming in. FC Tulsa, and is denied. Paul Blanchett makes the stop. Not out of the woods yet. Makes another. My goodness. FC Tulsa, like soldiers down on the field. They could not pass Blanchett. There's your save number 99 and save 100 on the year for Paul Blanchett, but it's just too easy for Mila Yosa just to get in beyond this back line of the Oakland Roots. Just a ball over the top. There's no pressure on it, so you need to drop off. But when you have Paul Blanchett between the sticks, 
you expect them to make these saves time and time again. Just massive the goalkeeper for the Okaroots, because that could have been really dirty. And a big hill to climb for the Okaroots going down 2 0 in their first half. Fantastic stuff. Certainly keeping this at 1 0, a big reason. Paul Blanchett, goalkeeper for this. Oakland side, as Ricky mentioned, now over that century mark and saves for this 20, 23 USL championship season. Lots of transitional opportunities, advantage granted here. The ball trickles in, set aside by Tamakis, before it was cleared by Nelson. One back, though, by Oakland. Daniel, though, loses it. Just to get back to that point about how tight the West is and that chase for home playoff game right now between third place, Orange County, 47 points, and eighth place, El Paso, 40 points. It's only a seven-point margin from three through eight. A win for Oakland in regulation would put them tied four with San Diego, who did lose earlier today to Louisville 1-0. So many iterations and so many weeks still to go to really get too deep into the nitty gritty. Get three points as often as you can and things will take care of itself. And the way that you do that for the Okamuchi is just being a bit better and more compact and tighter defensively. Going back to that double save from Paul Blanchett. It's defending 101, Drew. There's no pressure on the ball. That back line needs to drop off. You can't stay high because there's just so much real estate in beyond. Eric Bird understands that. Simp a ball over, clips it over the top. And Smiley Yosef is really coming to his own in his rookie campaign here for FC Tulsa. So I do think if you're Noel Delgado defensively, how do you tidy things up? That's going to be a big talking point as halftime approaches. Lane Ferry helped outlet that with Yosef, who had that great chance, the last rush for FC Tulsa. Really a chance to make it 2-0. Tulsa squad that 33 goals on the year, sixth fewest scored, 24 clubs. Oakland's right in the middle, 37. In the middle of the pack in the league, 12. See Tulsa coming off the nil-nil draw against Phoenix. Oakland with a bit of a big time disappointment the last time out, led 1-0 on Las Vegas. And saw three unanswered get past and a 3-1 loss to the lights last time. It's a game though that if you look at a lot of the statistics, Oakland, you would think, would have been in it a bit more. Outshot 10-7. Oakland out shooting Las Vegas. Also at 65% of the ball. Here, though, looking to equalize. Pass might have been intended to get all the way to Cedeno. Now look out. Marcus Epps, good trip ahead. Segrist trying to receive. Not going to have the angle. And you get a bit more cleaner in the final third if you're the Oka Roots. You're doing everything right to get yourself into an advanced position higher up the field. But time and time again, it's breaking down. You're passing out, finding its intended target. A loose touch here and there. Much like Las Vegas life last time out, this hasn't been good enough once you get in around that 18-yard box for the Oka Roots. Good ball. Trying to get on the other end of it. Wind and fire just wide. Oh, that's what Rodriguez can do. He got on the other end of it. Handled it, but sent it just wide of goal mouth. Just makes this look a lot easier than it is. Very difficult to get your body control running full head of steam to get enough of the swivel of the hips to put it on target, let alone get clean contact on the ball as it's falling down. You don't need to hit it too hard to keep that focus and hit through it. He does that, but just pulls it a bit too wide. And I do think that's been the progression that we've seen from Johnny Rodriguez. 
the ability just to create on his own, hold players off, but also run into the channels and stretch out position. Good opportunity for Johnny Rodriguez. The display of the technical skill for the Fresno, California native. Had a goal last week in the 12th minute. It was the opening goal against Vegas, PK. And one more goal would now tie Rodriguez for the most all time in club history. Another yellow card is coming out. They're starting to pile up a little bit. And Fekka here showing yellow. Exactly what I'm talking about. When Nate Worth gets the ball, it just seems like he's a step ahead. Drop of the shoulder, he sends the Fekka into Daniel Packing, and there's tons of green grass for him to run into. The youngster has been so impressive playing in the center of the park. Just 16 years old from Chester, New Jersey. It's incredible. Previous time with New York Red Bulls too. That would be his hometown club. Certainly the youngest player for FC Tulsa. Looking for the outlet here. Good numbers coming up at the intercept. And now Oakland will try and transitionally move it with Cedeno. Tamakis has been very active here too as well. Brian on it. Defender from El Salvador. That's so so. And now Cedeno. Out wide. Cross is through, trickling. Rodriguez had it tipped. Still in for Oakland. Pinballing around, header wide. How this ball does not cross, across that white line is beyond me. Just the numbers that they commit. Fantastic ball in for Lindo Mefeka, but Tamaka needs to crash the goal mouth. If he does, it's 1-0 Oakland Roots. But as the ball pobbles up, Tamaka gets the second bite at the apple. Does not miss by much. Rises up, ends it over that left shoulder, but just a bit wide of Michael Nelson's near post. Would have been the first goal of the season for Brian Tamakis. And has factored a bunch. Reverb on that header. Clementa there for Oakland at the possession chair for the last few moments. Looking to turn that into an equalizing first half tally. Long range blocked. Far out for Rodriguez there. You just see this Oakland root side in control, the way that they have the ability just to commit a lot of numbers forward without leaving themselves vulnerable. There's so many teams in USL Championship. Yes, you want to play progressive football. Yes, you want to set numbers forward, but on the back end of it, you leave yourself exposed. So can Roots, knows Elgato have a very good balance of when to go, but also when to be plus one in their defensive structure. Yosef sends it back. We are quickly approaching halftime. We're in the 38th minute already. 1-0 Tulsa on Goodrum's goal from Epps in the 10th minute. Since then, Oakland probably with some of the better chances in the last few moments. Bird is going to get whistled here. The shots are now 6-3 in favor of Oakland. Each team with two on target, including the goal for FC Tulsa. Goal for both of these sides, first and foremost, with where they both are. Qualified for the postseason. Here's Epps now. Goodrum, the runner, settling. This one loose inside. Actually, it was Segrist. Goodrum on the high side there on the run. That's when Nabil Hackshaw brings you just to be positioned to perfection. Segrist does extremely well to get himself in that 18 yard box. He picks up his head, and you just see the counteracting movement of Philip Goodrum. Little drop of the shoulder, try to catch Nabil Hackshaw 
stepping off his line and peels back. Really good defensive play from the experienced center back. And I do think if you're Blair Gavin, you have to be extremely pleased with just the ability to catch out this Oakland root side in transition moments, especially on this near side. Secrets, he's been very good at joining the attack and creating overloads. Egan Hughes on back with Teta. line for FC Tulsa back to Segrist. Not going to get it up to Epps, but could not. A couple of whistles here, maybe the placement of where it should be. And back to Oakland. Coming up at halftime, do stay with us. We'll take a look around the rest of the USL Championship. Plenty of other action. Scores from around the league. Couple of finals from earlier. Already told you about San Diego falling to Louisville. And much, much more, as well as some of the first half highlights of this one. Coming up at the break in just a few minutes. This Western Conference tilt. Kept in, did not fall out over the far touch line. Critical contest here tonight on both sides. Tamakis, who's been active, slotted inside. Nasiano. The build continues. Might be a corner. Not so. Time of the year where minutes have been building. The travel feels longer and all about managing the coaching staff perspective. How do you want to position yourself to make the playoffs? But once you're there, how do you position yourself to have the best complement of players well rested? Obviously, if you're higher up the table, maybe you can look more into that. But for these two sides at seventh, Oakland in the West and FC Tulsa ninth in the East. Probably don't really have that luxury. I think the all every single one of your remainder of games is a must win, especially for the Oakland Roots when you're at home. The stretch of home games that you talked about, Drew, is going to be so important. Great touch. Getting the edge. Drop back, but waiting on it. Tulsa at right side, Clementa. Or excuse me, Hughes. Whistle here. What opportunity just moments ago. Combination play as we'll take another look. And we're talking about playing on wide areas. Great touch here from Danny Barbier. But look at the movement on the back end of it. Memo Diaz and the same player behind him, whether it is Johnny Rodriguez, make the same run. They want to peel back to that cutback ball. They want to have that counteracting movement. One peels off, one slashes across that near post. In the end, it's an easy defending play for FC Tulsa. Hughes took that passing lane away as the angle closed. Possession relatively even here, 53-47, Oakland the slight edge is out over the near touch line. So it will head back for FC Tulsa. Blair Gavin's crew. Back-to-back -back weeks against similar style squads. Phoenix a week ago. Connections, of course, in the uh, coaching world as well over the last couple of years. So makes the prep uh, maybe a tad easier or at least different. Get that every day. Cedeno. I also mentioned that the week prior, oh, complete opposite style with San Antonio. Crowd wanted a foul on what would have been a penalty, but there was nothing there. Now we'll get some whistles and some sorting out to do. 
and a yellow card. He's gone. And the Mafeka just picked up a red card. My goodness. Wow, this one has changed quickly. Crowd not happy. Second yellow becomes the red for Mfeka. We talked about managing moments. We talked about managing emotions for Oakland Roots. On a yellow card, you need to be better. You need to know better. Though the Mafeka, the studs are exposed. You come in extremely late. No question whatsoever. A second booking, and now the hill just got that much steeper for the Oakland Roots. Studs are high. Catches. Seem like Eric Bird on the follow through. I think if you're Nelo Delgado, it's going to be very interesting to just to see the changes you do at halftime. You bring, do you bring in a player? Do you change formation? Really big challenge here now for the Oakland Roots. Absolutely devastating for Oakland. Playing with 10 for the fourth time this season. Fourth red card that Oakland has been shown. And now down a goal. Perhaps the only solace will be halftime adjustments. And a chance to settle into what would be the 10-man plan. Lots of whistles going both sides. Halftime may be a welcome sight for everybody, including the referee. It's going to be placed by the Oakland keeper, Blanchett. Woodrum <coughs> nearly did not retreat in time. Blanchett thought about launching one. Might have really lifted the top out of this place. Second yellow picked up by Mfeka just moments ago. Oakland will play with 10 the rest of the way. Crowd becoming restless and perhaps rightly so. I think if you're Melvin Rivas, our center referee, you have to get control of this game extremely quick. Hostile environment, massive three points. This game could get away from you. Don't want to have any off the ball promotion. You need to be very stern in your talking and show which one of these players is in trouble of picking up a secondary card here. I have a feeling we're going to get that halftime whistle very, very soon, maybe after this free kick. And once again, Philip Goodrum, this is where he thrives. Like you said, you're getting under the skin of his opposition. You can just see him, and that's halftime. I do think if you're Noel Delgado, a lot of questions have to be answered. You're looking at the players that are going to be staying on the field, 10 of them, to dig down deep, have a bit of character, have a bit of fight, and just go after this thing, try to pull out a result when everything is against you. And for Blair Gavin, managing emotions, managing moments, and how clinical can you be to see this game out? You saw there, there's some clearly some, still some emotions amongst the Oakland Roots and the officiating trio on the field in this one. It is halftime. FC Tulsa has the 1 0 lead, and they're up a man for the second half. Oakland playing with 10. Our halftime coverage coming up right after this on ESPN. Plus. Eating a balanced diet and being physically active are two of the most important things you can do to be healthy at any age. Fruits, vegetables, and lean proteins can help control your weight and prevent heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. Regular exercise can help boost your mood, digestion, and sleep. That's why Anthem Blue Cross and Oakland Roots encourage you to eat right and get active. For additional healthy tips, visit www.oaklandrootssc.com anthem. 
great to have delicious, healthy meals delivered right to your door? No planning, shopping, or prepping. And what if your delivery was full of plant-based, fresh ingredients that truly nourish and fuel your body? Try Thistle. Our in-house chefs create a new menu each week for you to choose from before it arrives ready to eat. No prep needed. And for a limited time, you can save $100 off your first four weeks. So go ahead and autopilot your diet. Get started today at jointhistle.com. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card? A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order? Then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with East Bay Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit ebce.org to learn more about EBCE's low rates for electricity. is transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. So again, it is one to nothing here at halftime. Much more on that coming up in just a little bit, but exciting news this week in Oakland. Would you like to become a part owner of Oakland Roots and Seoul SC? Well, here's your chance. About more than soccer and about putting Oakland first, as I found out the last few years have brought an even deeper discussion about where the team and its staff wants to stand in this moment in history. In history, in history, in history. What is a sports team anyway? It's part of the fabric. Part of what makes us, us. It's where we come together to celebrate the best of who we are. It's how we tell our own story and not how others define us. It's jobs, opportunity, a stage, a dream. It's how we plant our roots and nourish our soul. And off we go, history in Oakland. More than anything, it's love, baby. This started with a promise to the community. We meant what we said. It hasn't been easy, but we're here for the challenge. Uh, shout out to the Oakland Roots and my man, uh, Beast Mode. Because you deserve this. This was built for you. And for everyone who feels the same. So why shouldn't you own it? Point out one of them. Now here's Memo Diaz the other way. Diaz! Yeah! 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 Oakland Roots Soccer Club. How did this come about? <laughs> Marshawn Lynch, one of the most notable investors in the club as we take a look at the Oakland Roots remaining regular season schedule. The next two after tonight at home, Monterey Bay and San Antonio before hitting the road, Orange County and San Diego. Don't have to leave the state of California the rest of the season for Oakland. Meanwhile, on the other side, we take a look at what FC Tulsa has left. They're going to have to do some traveling and some pretty significant traveling at that. Back home, of course, after this one tonight, then at Charleston and back, at Pittsburgh and back, 
in the 11, a hosted game, and then out to Hartford. So some long trips remain for FC Tulsa. Four of the final five on the road. But the coaching staff, Blair Gavin sharing. If you think of it as just one road game on the weekend, it becomes a lot more manageable. And so far, manageable tonight. FC Tulsa leads Oakland by a score of 1-0 at the break. We'll have more of our halftime coverage when we come on back here on ESPN+. Let's be honest, most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. There's nothing like the support of your teammates. When it comes to your health, Anthem Blue Cross is here for you. If you're enrolled in a Medi-Cal health plan at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, then you may need to renew your coverage or find a new plan that's right for you. Anthem offers budget-friendly individual and family plans, some starting at $0. Renew your coverage or explore other options. Learn more at remaincovered.com CA. Back here with you at halftime to take a look around the rest of USL Championship. Some news and notes, only 28 days until the end of the regular season. Street snap for Orange County and a, a big time move on the way across the league, Ricky. I think Milan and Lossi well deserved. You look at a consistent performer at the top of this game in USL Championship. Golden Boot gets his well deserved move to FC Nordschland in the Danish Superliga. So that's going to be massive. But how does he end this end of this 2023 campaign with Orange County, who, by the way, snapped their nine match unbeaten streak? You have to give credit to Stephen Hogan and boys. McGee scored a fantastic goal on the road. So it's going to be very interesting. What's the reaction look like for Orange County? But also, how does Milan Alaski leave USL Championship at the end of this season? Something fascinating to watch as we also take a look at what is going on across the rest of the league and take a look at some of the other action that is coming up later this weekend. And by later this weekend, we mean one game, RGV, Birmingham, and then a lot of midweek games as well as there's going to be some tired legs and some miles traveled for some of these squads in just a couple of days. And I do think if you're an FC Tulsa supporter, you're looking at Miami and Blue City, Miami dropping points, but also Indy 11 going to Phoenix Rising. And that's something that if you're an Oakland supporter, you're looking at that game as well. Monterey Bay, they're losing at the moment to Las Vegas at home. It's halftime 2-1 there. And the Sacramento, New Mexico, Birmingham, Memphis, tons of games in terms of just the playoff implications. Picking up some of those out-of-town scores, brought to you by Visit Oakland. Get on the town and visit Oakland to explore arts, culture, and world-class cuisine. A couple of games have already gone final. A couple of games, a game from yesterday as well. Louisville City 1-0 over San Diego, so Oakland can make up three on San Diego today. And 
a surprising result. Maybe Charleston and Loudon 2-2 there in the Eastern Conference. And there's some other games going on right now that Ricky was chronicling, including Monterey Bay in action, currently trailing 2-1 over Las Vegas. Phoenix and Detroit, 0-0 here in the first half, 28th minute. And also 0-0 Sacramento and El Paso. So that is a look at what is going on in the rest of the league. Here we've got 45 more minutes to go. We're getting ever closer to it. FC Tulsa leads Oakland Roots 1-0 at the break. There's satisfaction in sacrifice. In spilling blood. Sweat and tears in knowing that you left it all on the floor and never threw in the towel well except to clean up the mess giving it all for your team is worth every drop medela brewed for fans with a fighting spirit how can someone so cute be so complicated someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do we know kids aren't many adults their still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. Wouldn't it be great to have delicious, healthy meals delivered right to your door? No planning, shopping, or prepping. And what if your delivery was full of plant-based fresh ingredients that truly nourish and fuel your body? Try Thistle. Our in-house chefs create a new menu each week for you to choose from before it arrives ready to eat. No prep needed. And for a limited time, you can save $100 off your first four weeks. So go ahead and autopilot your diet. Get started today at jointhistle.com. The mission of Fertile Ground Works is of Teach, Grow, Give. Teach people how to grow food for themselves, grow it, and then give it away to people who need it. We grow about 25,000 pounds of food a year. We also operate something we call the Sustainable School Garden Program. Teachers ask us for help setting up a garden on their own campuses. East Bay Community Energy was nice enough to give us $2,500 that we were able to focus on one of our school gardens, and I am truly grateful. Tonight's match is presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross, by UCSF, and by Modelo. We are just about set for the beginning of the second half of play, Oakland and FC Tulsa. As we see the game's opening goal, the only goal thus far, on Soso, the service, or excuse me, Epps, the service, into Goodrum, and that's how it got to one nothing, Ricky. Talk about putting the ball on a platter. What a fantastic little clipped ball over the top, but the question is for Nel Delgado, what's the reaction look like, the rotation between Danny Barbier and Neville Hackshaw, Phyllis Goodrum, fantastic header, little snap over his right shoulder, Paul Blanchett never stand a chance, but then the open route starts to grow into the game. You start to see whether it was Jaseel Cedeno, well, there was a little Mafeka. This is unneeded here from Hughes. Just catches Memo Diaz, and he makes the most of it. But start to see the reaction from Noel Delgado's side. And I'll care about really choppy, Drew. You start to see certain fouls coming here and there. No one really got into rhythm. And it's going to be very frustrating for Noel Delgado that he's down a man to start this second half here. A couple of yellow cards that were shown to Lindo Mafeka. Looking for an opportunity for a second goal. This was just brilliant goalkeeping and stick to itiveness on the Oakland side to keep it. The first save we just saw moments ago, and then there's the second just coming out and making the stop. Paul Blanchett keeping it 1 0. I do think if you're Milo Yosef, if you're Philip Goodrum, you're going to want this one back. But take nothing away from the fantastic individual brilliant, which is Paul the Wall, the goalkeeper for the Yilkin Roots, standing up on his head. So I do think it's a massive 45 minutes here for the Oakland Roots. You're down one nil at home, have lost three on the road, four out of your last five. Looking down at that playoff margin, you need to get something here. 
And there is the opening whistle for this second half of play. Thanks for being with us. Tulsa with the 1-0 lead over Oakland Roots, along with the rest of our crew here at Pioneer Stadium, alongside Ricky Lopez Espin. I'm Drew Casey. Delighted you've decided to join us. Oakland Black Based top set bottoms right to left. FC Tulsa in the white tops and bottoms. So Oakland will get a set piece opportunity. Sneak it up a little bit. As we ready for this one, Memo Diaz standing over it. He'll go short. Out wide, better angle, lefty service now. Looking for a noggin player down. And Oakland nearly getting on top of it. Danny Barbier got free. Couldn't get to the ball, though. One halftime change. Colin Fernandez coming on for FC Tulsa, replacing Blaine Ferry. Right back in are the roots, and this is a foul, and we'll be very curious to see the whistle and how the second half tone is established by Malvin Rivas. And a really interesting sub for Blair Gavin as well. Blaine Ferry was on a yellow card, but essentially next to Eric Bird. So now what does that look like in terms of the relationship? Langford, like for Colin Fernandez, he's a player that's very similar to Blaine Ferry. Left footed by Trey, wants to get in those half's pockets and can create for himself, beat players 1v1 in combination play. So how quickly can he get up the tempo and the rhythm here? Because he can be a game changer going forward for FC Tulsa. Remember, Oakland playing with just 10 men. Fekka picking up two yellow cards in the first half. Offside flag up here, came in the 44th minute, so not much time that Oakland had to deal with it. And maybe the halftime break comes at a decent time. Of course, though, playing down a man for 45 plus, down a goal, no easy task at all. Fourth time that Oakland has seen red this season. Strong challenge here. This might be a yellow for a couple of reasons. One to establish in the second, and it is going to be indeed. Hackshaw showed yellow. And I'm okay with this call from our center referee. Neville Hackshaw knows exactly what he's doing. Just side checks Philip Goodrum and Melvin Rivas. That's just like you said, establishing dominance and showing everyone on the field how tightly this second half is going to be called. So now you have Napo Matsoso, Nabil Hackshaw, two players down the spine of the Oakton Roots on a yellow card. Seven yellow cards now for Hackshaw on the season. Trying to go over the top here, getting on top of one. Good drum, a whistle flag is up. It is not a foul, flag up, offside. And the training staff coming out. Being motioned by the training staff. Let's take another look here, reaching for that right ankle. The, se the simple time, second time, excuse me. And a ball over the top, Miley Yosef gets free. This falls awkwardly, Philip Goodrum, but you just see immediately grabs that left ankle. Something that if you're an FC Tulsa supporter, you don't want to see in Blair Gavin. He's been just spectacular since coming over from Memphis 901. It has been a night of drawing contact for Goodrum. He's drawn a couple of yellow cards there, though. Falls awkwardly. He hopes that he is A-OK. -okay. Another look here. Just watch that left ankle. Philip Goodrum, Danny Barbier, just clips him on the fall through. It's offside, yes, but no ill will. But you just see the aftermath. Danny Barbier puts his whole body weight on the interior of Philip Goodrum's left ankle. Looks like Melvin Rivas trying to get Goodrum to come off the field. 
if you're good from, you're going to sit there as long as allowed because they won't resume the game with him sitting on his backside. It's been a busy night for Rivas. Goodrum's going to walk off here. Oakland Roots back at home coming up on September 23rd against Monterey Bay FC. Limited single game tickets are still available. Purchase yours now before they sell out. To secure your tickets, visit us at oaklandrootssc.com slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. We have restarted opening minutes of this second half. Lots of whistles, lots of contact, and here comes an, another whistle, and a yellow card is out. Oh, they're coming fast and furious now. This time, it's Patrick Segrist who sees yellow. You have to be very careful now if you're a defensive player in this match. The picking and choosing, your position needs to be spot on. Because how tight Melvin Rivas is calling the remainder of this match, everything is going to be whistled. You just see he gets tangled up with Tamakas there. Well, on the other side, if you're an attacking player, you use that to your advantage. You become very clever. Served in by the roots. Angling towards the flag, and it's going to be a throw-in for Oakland. Really interesting to see, perhaps, at the front foot attacking play, how that may develop even more so with the physicality and the various whistles. It's also a player down behind the point of attack. Everyone two feet now. As we play in the 52nd minute. Shots are 6-4 in favor of Oakland. 3-2 on target, though, in favor of FC Tulsa, and the game's only goal back in the 10th minute from Philip Gudrum. Connecting on the Marcus Epps feed. Nate Worth has been solid in the midfield today. Has it here. Calm touches, that's Epps. Right on back for Worth. It's so interesting, just the different sides when you go up a man or versus down a man. So now for FC Tulsa, you can't let complacency creep in. You know how massive of a game this is, but with the advantage, you're up 1-0. Advantage in terms of numbers on the field. You think you have more time and space on the ball than you actually do, but if you're Blair Gavin, the message is to the boys, the ball needs to move a lot quicker, make the Oakland Roots chase from side to side, open up gaps, and when those gaps open up, that's when you can penetrate and use that numerical advantage to your side. And for the Oakland Roots, how compact can you be defensively? How unison can you step in into that middle third of that back line? But also, Johnny Rodriguez, it's a big challenge for him now in terms of his hold-up play to bring players involved and relieve some of the pressure that the Oakland Roots are going to be under in the second half here. Again, Mfeka, two yellow cards in the first half. Shown red in the 44th minute. Oakland down a man for the remainder of this one. Plenty of others, though, on yellows on both sides. Asiano sent that one ahead. We're going to get a whistle here. Don't think we'll see another booking. Daniel won it. That's interesting stat here, Drew. You look at SC Tulsa, they're unbeaten in their last 10 championship matches when leading at halftime. Nine wins and one draw. And the other side, the Oak and Roots have a record of one draw and six losses when losing at halftime in USL Championship. Just about as you would suspect in the thinnest of margins in this ultra, ultra competitive league. No foul there. Oakland looking for this possession. Barbier looking it around for Clementa to level. Daniel couldn't get through. He wants to 
ultra active Nate Worth helping to jar that one loose before it was sent wide. Just the third season in USL Championship for Oakland. Losing last year in the opening round of the postseason, finished seventh in the West. 46 points, 11, 10, and 13, almost symmetrical across there. And tight again this year. In fact, we've already matched the 11 and 10 wins, losses, only seven draws to this point. See if we get a whistle here. Yes, we are. Hackshaw on a yellow, but certainly nothing there to warrant a second. Need to be very careful, Neville Hackshaw. Now, his positioning needs to be perfection for the remainder of this game. You don't want to get caught in any gray areas. We give credit to Eric Bird. He understands the center back. He's in already trouble. If I go down, I put a lot of pressure on Melvin Rivas and his decision-making forced a hand. Fernandez, bottom, Yosef straight on as we ready here. It will be Yosef bending wide, looking for a connection. Chipped in by Worth, battle on, and it is secured by Paul Planchette, who then goes down. And hold on, what's going on here? Oh, Goodrum's got a yellow card. That'll be 11 yellows against Goodrum. He can't believe it. But I do think there's an argument to be had if you're Philip Goodrum. Paul Blanchett runs into him. He invites a contact. He dives into Philip Goodrum. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You force the hand of the referee. You become a bit clever. I did not expect Paul Blanchett to be the clever one on the field. I think there's agreement on both sides. That, that's not a yellow card. <laughs> Unfortunate, especially on the race here. Oakland, Matsoso. And those numbers continuing to rise too for Goodrub. Now on the yellow and likes to play that type roll to get under your skin. But now has to be careful himself. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Can work both ways, but they're an unfortunate break. Now Goodrum back on it offensively towards the corner flag. Be careful there. Hold on, everybody. That is Goodrum again. That a lot more of a yellow worthy than the last one. You're just looking for consistency now. If you're giving a yellow card for that tackle on Paul Blanchett, and I'd say tackle in quotation marks, this has to be a yellow card as well. But the fact that it's a second one, that's why you don't give it, right? And that's straight into the face of Neville Hackshaw, right in front of the line of referee. Talk about managing emotions. Off the ball movement now becomes that much more important. And I wouldn't be surprised if Blair Gavin takes a star number nine off the field in terms of game management. Yeah, certainly a break for FC Tulsa. After not getting one, they might say in the bigger picture, even out, but can't look at it that way. It's the order that is important. And that would have leveled the game up at 10 apiece. Oakland is down a man. Fekka, two yellows in the first half. It has been a fight out there. And just look at the benches for both of these sides. For the Oakland Roots, you have Palais, you have Trayvon Reed. Jai, Prentice, her players that can contribute on the attacking phase of the game. On the other side, way up, McCabe centrally, and Haji as well, attack-minded players. It's going to be very interesting to see what changes, if so any, if Blair Gavin and Noel Delgado dip into their bench. The flow of this one really suffering as a result of the physical nature that we've seen here. Three Rivas trying to get out of the way. 
One hour in, 1-0 Tulsa, way back in the 10th minute. Goodrum from Epps. Epps baiting off that left side, now hands off. Working with Goodrum. Additional space kicked out wide for Yosef. Ball loose, top of the box. And controlled by Cedeno. Trying to win it back in the press. Over the top, here's a strong connection. Fighting through all that contact was Rodriguez. Bit behind for Tamakis, and now we'll get a whistle. We have some more contact after the whistle, and Goodrum may have been knocked down. It's another yellow card. And this one in danger of getting out of hand. Let's take another look. You just can't do that. Lucky enough for Johnny Rodriguez, it wasn't higher. Just catches Nate Worth square in the chest, right in front of Melvin Rivas. We'll talk about the amount of yellow cards that have been shown here tonight, counting the double for Linda Mafeka. Eight, if my math is right. That's what I've got. I'm running out of fingers, though, Ricky. <laughs> and we still have more than 28 minutes to go. And I'll tell you what, math was my least strongest subject. In, that was in my strongest, school. so we're, we're, <laughs> we we're a good team. We're a good team tonight, Ben. I just know it's a lot of yellow cards that have been given. I agree with you there. The officials in yellow tonight for a reason. As a result of all this, we've got a free kick. Diaz lining it up towards Cage, center post. And we'll get a whistle for offside, flag up on the far side of the field. Third minute. One nil Tulsa Select is the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. You can visit www.us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. Long range here, that one is launched over everything. We get a couple of changes here. Trayvon Reed coming on and will replace Matt Soso. Matt Soso on a yellow, he's gonna leave. That'll be the first change for Oakland. And we also will see and more Palais coming on as well. So two changes for Oakland here. Rodriguez will come off. This substitution powered by East Bay Community Energy. East Bay Community Energy providing green power at low rates. Visit ebce.org to find out more. Two, two attack-minded subs now for Noel Delgado. You bring on Trayvon Reed player that can create something out of nothing. And then where Palais, the tenacious number nine, likes to run in behind and stretch this back line for FC Tulsa. I do think that those both players that stepped off the field were on the yellow card, so that played into the decision of No Delgado. Just looking for a little bit of spark in terms of just the energy, the quality, when they get themselves in the final third. Great touch. Chip here. 
looking for some space, dispossessed Cedeno, but still alive for Oakland. Long range fire, just wide. Best opportunity for Oakland in quite some time, nearly level at one, but it goes just high and wide. I think you look at the wide pairings for Arnold Zogato, whether it's Tamakas and Cedeno, but this side it's Memo Diaz and Danny Barbier. Memo Diaz comes centrally, so that brings in Yosef and that opens up a hole on this far side for Danny Barbier, who doesn't need a second invitation to pull the trigger. We just see his balance is all off while he hits this. Shoulders are back, head goes up. That's why you see go high and wide of that goal, but a good instance there for Oakland Roots. Two changes just moments ago, again with Reed and Palais coming on for Oakland. We saw Fernandez come on at halftime for FC Tulsa. Placed Blaine Ferry. Game has had more of a flow over the last few moments. That'll stop here and we'll get a whistle. And hold on, if this is another yellow, that is going to be Oakland down to nine. Oh, I think he is extremely lucky to be Hackshaw. You get a yellow card, you take off Philip Goodrum or Eric Bird moments ago, and then this one, he's gone. It's that touch that create that separation right there. That's through the back. And how he's a Nazi yellow and taking another early shower to deal Hackshaw is beyond me. Very, very lucky man to stay on this field and keep the Oakland and Roots at 10 players. Oakland in danger of dropping its fourth consecutive match here. Looking to equalize first, but perhaps looking to stay with 10 as well. Nassiano, the first outlet out wide, going over the top, little no man's land for the keeper. Palais with the fresh legs. Reed, center of the box. Can't get it there though. Looking to try and get through, but could not and sent away. This one sent away along in and it should be a corner not a foul, though it's going to just be the corner. It was after the ball was deflected away. Cedeno. Diaz getting sent for this corner. Not a huge surprise with all these yellows. Oakland, fifth most yellows in the league coming into tonight. It's also the third most. Corner is in, looking for a noggin just wide. Great opportunity, Tamakis though, just wide of that post. He does everything right. Just lacking that last bit of quality because he does, he wins his individual battle, he rises up and gets clean contact on the ball. Hits a target, it's 1-1. One, one. Just gets on the wrong side of Milo Yosef, rises up of Everyone, Marcus. I do think for the Oakland Roots, not creating a whole lot of opportunities through the run of play, so set pieces are going to be really important. See the press working a little bit there, trying to win it back in that high area. Yosef tangling up with Hackshaw, and on, now a yellow card is coming out. This one will be against Yosef. Okay, what is a yellow card and what's not a yellow card now? If you're Nabil Hakshaw, what you did moments ago was way beyond this and Milo Yosef. Yes, it's a foul. Yellow card? Big question mark around that. Got to change for Oakland Roots at this opportunity. Abukar Jai is coming on, and Hackshaw is going to exit. Probably a good move there. 
And Snow Delgado knowing that his center back is lucky to be on the field now. So now, a little change in formation for the Oakland Roots. Jai's going to play as an outside back, wing back position. That's either going to draw in Emmer Clementor or Danny Barbier centrally as the center of that back line. It's now three changes that have been made for Oakland. Jai the third, Reed and Palais a few moments earlier. Celebrate your next event with the Oakland Roots. Groups of 10 or more can take advantage of specially priced tickets and enjoy memorable experiences, including player meet and greets, the parade of champions, playing on the field at halftime, and much more. To reserve your group experience, contact us at tickets at rootssc.com or call 510-488-1144. Strong takeaway as Epps was on the charge. Twenty minutes plus, of course, second half stoppage time remaining. Also fine to see that number decrease. Teta, 28-year-old from Ghana, the most minutes on the team. On that back line, Segrist, Rucci, Teta, Hughes back there. FC Tulsa. Nobody home on the direct send. Takeaway here. Opportunity momentarily from what was nothing to nearly something for Oakland. And that might be how they have to equalize this one, playing down a man. Centrally, the big man, Yosef, out wide for Epps. Had the assist earlier, left footed in close. And a strong touch defensively will clear the way for Diaz. Blanchett. And on out. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2023. Whether your club is on the road or at home, catch nearly every second of USL Championship action on ESPN+. Plus. The home of the USL, La Liga, the Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Sign up today at plus.espn. Coaching that 15 minutes to play. Mark in the second half here this evening. Pioneer Stadium, Cal State East Bay. And the Roots crowd looking to galvanize the group. Playing down a man since the half. Plenty of players on yellows. Many have been subbed off, but still multiple remain. As we approach double digits in bookings in this one. Tough for the Roots to get anything going. We'll direct over the top here, looking for a fortunate bounce with Tamakis. Possession one in the attacking third. Oakland Roots inside Tamakis is down, but told to get on up by the referee. And perhaps a counter building with Yosef. Slowed down for Epps. Still some slight numbers. Four on three. Jai joining back. Looking for the offside flag. It's not coming. Play continues. Everybody nearly stopped. This one, long range, is wide. And Paul Blanchett is 
not happy giving it to the AR. I do think if you're Blair Gavin as well, you're going to be extremely frustrated, not capitalizing on that situation. 5v4 going back the other way. You expect a shot on target at minimum, putting Paul Blanchet under some pressure. But you slow things down. Marcus Epps takes way too many touches. You have a little bit of hope now if you're the Oak and Roots. 15 plus minutes left. Still 1 0. There is something to be said. There's going to be chances to tie this thing up. Fresh legs for Jai, slotted in. Native of the Gambia. Reed, also some fresh legs, second half substitute. And sent out of the immediate danger zone. Yeah, really well read there by Danny Barbier. Lead Philip Godrum because he sees the oncoming run of Marcus Epps. I do think the Oakland Roots are just missing that last bit of decision making. Giving that extra pass when not needed or not passing when needed. The right ball at the right time to the right player. Watch out here. Coming back the other way. As again, a little bit behind in the transition game as Epps on the chase does keep at the far touch line. Now loses, not so fast however. Slam down to the turf by Tamakis, the ball that is. Not agree with the call. Out reacting as well here at Cal State East Bay. Be a big time boost for FC Tulsa. Jai slotted ahead. That's clean and take it away. That one's not going to be clean. And the whistle and a Tulsa free kick coming. It's a bit too many touches there from Jai. And try to recover from your mistake. You step higher. Oh, we've got a lot going on away from the play here. And this one is going to take some sorting out. They're going to have a conversation. The officials are. As we put on the verge of things breaking open and when it might have just happened. We'll start with this touch here from Colin Fernandez, Trayvon Reed. With the completely other side of the field. It seems like Marcus Sebs and Tamakis get involved in it. Get a look at it. The negative touch invites a contact. But off the ball movement and contact was definitely made. We're going to get some colors coming out. Yellow card. Red card is out as well. Epps has been sent off. And we will go 10 v 10. My goodness. This one has changed in a hurry. We will even it up as Epps is shown the red card. Tamaka's got the yellow. That's a trade off Oakland will take though. And remember, this happened nowhere near the course of play. And the assistant referee able to make the call and assess the red card for this officiating crew. Well, here we go, 10 v 10. And it's calm, it's like a library. <laughs> They're all closed at this hour. Whistle here. Unfortunate enough, as it was away from the ball, we were unable to see what happened. 
don't want to speculate, but Maka sees yellow, Marcus Sepp sees red. Something that the Lino told our center Melvin Rios, Rivas, excuse me. And that's going to be frustrating for Blair Gavin. Up 1-0 on the road, hostile environment. Don't want to get into ex anything extracurricular and leave yourself at a disadvantage. And now, it will be very interesting for this last 10 minutes remaining here. Yosef takes this free kick. FC Tulsa looking for the second goal. This one is ruled out. Blanchett has really got to be careful. He was reaching for a ball behind the goal before the whistle even came. You just feel the momentum starting to swing in favor of the Oakland Roots. The fans willing the boys in black to keep on going. Jai there going down the near sideline. Ricky, you've got a guess towards stoppage time here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what a yellow card is at the moment, so let alone stoppage time. And it could be a very large number. Opportunity here, Oakland looking to equalize. Drop pass slightly out of rhythm. Possession though maintained. Long range through some traffic. That's an onside reception. Maybe not necessarily expected as Palais put through the washing machine there. Palais is still a little bit slow to get up. He might have lost a shoe actually. Or just adjusted it. He's getting back to an onside position. Approaching the top of the box. Oakland looking for the equalizer here in what's been a wild one, to say the least. Chipped in. Jai here. Let's see if we have any additional changes coming. Down the stretch run. Marbeer reversing around for Clementa. Lots of traffic. The flag's coming up. It is. And it is offside. Back that quick little offside. Can't watch the match. Turn on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24 7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access. That's Tuesday nights at 7 Eastern Time. Plus, you can hear live matches from the USL, MLS, English Premier League, and more. That's all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the SXM app. Eighty-fourth minute now, and again some stoppage time, which well, it's at least three or four, I'd say, but it wouldn't shock me if it's much more than that. So we've got time at 10 v 10 at the moment. Epps shown the straight red here for extracurricular away from the play in the second half. And Fekka shown two yellows well, in the first half. So Oakland has kept it one nil for almost 35 minutes before. Epps was sent off. Flag is up here. Offside, and now substitution. We will see that change for Oakland. Come again is Ryan Herr. Replacing Jesse El Cedeno. Her just 63 minutes on the season. Sixth appearance, all have come off, off of the Oakland bench. Blinded cross in, just immediately back out. Whistle here. National Suicide Prevention Week is September 10th through September 16th. To support the mental health of our communities, the USL has partnered with the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Need support? Call or text 988 now. You are not alone. Game has settled a bit since Marcus Epps. He's been sent off with the red. Of course, that might open some eyes. 
It also changes the mindset. 10 v 10 versus the man up and full lead. One almost had to be uh, nutmeg through the AR there. Of course, uh, <laughs> out of play if that were to occur. Yosef will toss it, and certainly Tulsa takes some time. I love that second goal to change the complexion. Goodrum dispossessed. He's on a yellow card. He's drawn a couple. Certainly intensity when he is in possession. Back over the top. Strong settle and exit from the area. I think if you're Blair Gavin, you have to be very pleased with just your back line. How good have they been positionally winning those aerial duels with two center backs? Rucci. Set set and Hughes, very good. As one steps up to challenge the other to provide that coverage underneath. Not an easy feat to come into Pioneer Stadium. Job is not done whatsoever, but to have a clean sheet this far in this type of game with all the pressure on the shoulders of FC Tulsa defensively, they've been fantastic here. Time wasting yellow for Hughes. The referee took the red one out first. That was by mistake. Didn't raise it, so Hughes on the yellow card. And to your point, Ricky, with Tulsa. Only one goal allowed two matches ago against San Antonio. Clean sheet last week in a nil-nil draw, and clean here so far, so very good run of play on that side. But the three points, that's what's critical for Tulsa here. Oakland as well, but at this stage, they would probably take one point out of this given where we are. And I do think if you're Blair Gavin over the last couple of months, the emphasis has to be on defending. You come into this game, 46 goals against, 33 goals for. Offensively, we talked about how good they've been on the road, grind out results, and for Oakland, 34 goals for, excuse me, goals against, 37 for. So how do you get going on the attacking phase because as of late you've been struggling not only in your results but also producing goals and creating chances. Chipped in. Sent back out with the head. Good score one goal last week against Las Vegas on the penalty kick. It was converted by Johnny Rodriguez early in the game. Will this be a corner? Yes, indeed. Corner kick powered by East Bay Community Energy. East Bay Community Energy, providing green power at low rates. Visit ebce.org to find out more. This might be the opportunity before we get to stoppage time for Oakland Roots to try and level. Diaz is readying. Right-footed ball sent in. Players down. Barbier may be trying to draw a whistle, did not get it. Goodrum here, go oh, careful. On a yellow is Philip Goodrum. Quick restart, Blanchett. Come all the way up from his line. Use Blanchett to help exit. Tell you one thing, regardless of what happens over this last 60 seconds plus stoppage time, we're gonna need a lot of ice and tape <laughs> following this game. Hard fought battle. Just over the Naga there on the cross ball. No touch either side, so it's going to be a goal kick as we'll get that stoppage time number in just a few. And he's been active just coming on. Well, I has been not having the service to get on the end of things. And then Trayvon Reed, I think they provided just a bit of a spark and energy that was lacking.
Quite productive restart in terms of the time between. Six more. Six minutes of stoppage time. Oakland chasing. Ten men aside. Jai. Maybe trying to get it back, but redirected by Reed, and nobody there. Yeah, that's a right idea there from Jai. But just not clean enough on the back pass from Trayvon Reed. Crosses in for Oakland. Aerial battle at the six, punch the side. And was this kept in? Yes, it was. Corner avoided. Really good opportunity there. Nearly a conversion. Ryan Herr, a mix of all that. This month, the USL is celebrating Hispanic Latino Heritage Month with stories, events, and more bringing to life this special celebration across the league. Go to uslsoccer.com slash Hispanic heritage to learn more. And we are 10 men aside. Red card shown to Epps if you step aside for a little bit. Here comes another corner kick for Oakland. They'll make it quick. Keep the run of form moving. Now a throw in. Headed back out. Strong coverage by Nate Worth, who's put together a really strong performance for FC Tulsa. On both sides there, chipped in. Lots of English on that one, a great service. Still not out with the second ball headed, but now it is gone. Way back in the first, Philip Goodrum, the goal scorer, his 10th of the year for Marcus Epps on this end of the field. That's all we've gotten to this point. This can be covered by Michael Nelson. Is that a strong performance? Get some whistles here and the training staff coming out, reaching that stage of the game, perhaps with some cramping. E-Football 2024 is now here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL Championship Club. It's free to play. Download now. And Rivas directing the training staff. Went safe and allowed to do so. Segrist there is going to have to leave and procedurally be allowed back on. So that six minute number you see up there, it's probably at least seven, maybe eight. Main point there is time. So maybe a little bit of a cut as well. We're going to get a change for FC Tulsa. Seagrass is going to come off. No chances here. Justin Malou coming on, the 25-year-old. Last year with Columbus Crew 2 in MLS Next Pro, they were the champs. Malou getting just a short stint here. He has started 19 games, more than 1,500 minutes. Critical moments here as FC Tulsa looks to secure three points.
for the moment could perhaps propel FC Tulsa inside the playoff line. Detroit City currently down. But Detroit will, at the conclusion of tonight's play, still have one game at hand and control its destiny. Think of just those two sides. That conversation is moot. Something changes here, and Oakland would love for that to be the case to avoid what would be four consecutive defeats. Jai. Slotted left foot. This left side working with Reed. It's been a tough last couple five minutes here for Trayvon Reed. Every single touch that he's got on the ball has gone to FC Tulsa. Need to be a bit cleaner, especially as an attacking player. Your first touch is everything. Time and time, it's let him down. Barbier heard did a nice job to not allow the clearance. And eventually won back by teammates in the midfield. Service in. Top of the box and further outlet it again. At six minutes of stoppage time, likely to be at least seven with the injury we had. And we're going to get a card here. And Diaz goes into the book. Now that's a yellow card. He knows exactly what he's doing. A man of the match performance for me for the 16-year-old Nate Worth. Picks up that second ball. Just comes through and just takes him out. He's running through. You hear Blair Gavin on the back end of things, leading the case. Pleasure clearly being voiced. <laughs> and rightly so. It's a rash challenge, a hard challenge. As Memo Diaz comes in. Well, Ricky, as far as I know, we have not seen yellow cards ourselves. <laughs> but there is still some time. But again, many of them have been ones you would expect. And as I say that another yellow card has been handed out to the bench area, I believe Blair Gavin. We will continue on. Maybe 90 seconds. We have restarted. And Oakland might have time for one last rush if it has to go coast to coast. Which it looks like will have to be the case. And John. to 100 minutes here, Ricky. I haven't seen that in the regular season in a long time. It's been a lot of first tonight. Different categories. Here's Jai. Toss in coming. Time at a premium. Jai backing up to likely try and launch this as far as possible. Edge of the six. Wind up, chested down, still in the area, her! Misfires wide. Perhaps the final chance for Oakland to try and equalize. That ball is extremely kind to her, about 18 yards out, just looking for a bit of composure and to hit it clean and hit it flush. 
Well, this gets thrown off by the traffic oncoming. And sends it wayward. 100 triple digits. And there's the final whistle. And that will do it. A massive three points for FC Tulsa. Coming in to Pioneer Stadium and emerging 1-0 victors on the Goodrum goal in the 10th minute. But there's a lot more of the story to be told. Once again, the final 1-0, Tulsa victorious. I think if you're Blair Gavin, you have to be extremely pleased with how your professional, your boys approach this game. Hostile environment, big game ahead of hand. You keep yourself in that playoff hunt. You get that early goal. Yes, there was a lot of off the ball, off the field noise, but you stay true defensively. You are top class, get a clean seat, and massive three points going back to Oklahoma. We will take a timeout. We'll come on back, show you the full-time highlights, the stats, and close it all out. FC Tulsa victorious vaulting for the moment inside the playoff line in the Eastern Conference. Post game right after this on ESPN Plus. Little things can make a big difference. To have families access much needed resources, Anthem Blue Cross and Oakland Roots teamed up to deliver 2,300 diapers to the East Oakland Collective. By supporting parents and babies, we can improve the health of our communities. Here's to a brighter future and many more random acts of kindness. Learn more at oaklandrootssc.com slash anthem. Welcome you back to Pioneer Stadium. FC Tulsa victorious over Oakland Rooks. Huge three points in the Eastern Conference table. Let's take a look back at how this one played out. We got to 10 plus minutes of stoppage time in the second, but we're going to start very early in this one. 10th minute, and this was our tally, Ricky. And that's all there was in terms of goals scored and two names you would expect for FC Tulsa. But you see the pressure or lack thereof from Sedano. You can't give Marcus Epps the ability just to pick up his head, have a cup of coffee, and play into the Batman to his Robin, which is Philip Goodrum. The movement to play between him, Neville Hackshaw, Danny Barbier. Terrific ball, even better header, not even a courtesy dive for Paul Blanchett. But then the Oakland Roots start to wake up. And they started to wake up in different instances, yes, on the ball, but also just getting a bit physical, trying to get in the heads of FC Tulsa. We start to see our favorite color after this game, I think, Drew, is yellow because there is a tons of yellow cards. 12 yellow cards given, one to a coach, two red cards, 11 players. The list goes on and on, and that's the first one of the bunch right there. Yeah, as you mentioned, there are plenty of them. We'll see some of them. Additionally, down the stretch here, we're in the 29th minute. A great opportunity. Yosef Blanchett, great save. It wasn't done yet, though. A second time going to work. And Goodrum, again, answered by Blanchett. This one really could have looked a lot different. It could have been 2-0 at that point. Fast forward a little bit later. Again, looking for more opportunities. And Blanchett, strong day. And that one was ruled a yellow card. You can see it there. It was not. <laughs> Yeah, it was just a very interesting in terms of lack of consistency, but someone who will be extremely happy in Blair Gavin, you just see six shots, three on target. Probably not your best football in terms of the way that you played, but you found a way to grind out this really hard, tough win and keep yourself in that playoff picture. But for Nelly Delgado, four losses on the road, you're looking at the mirror and you're asking your boys, we need to create more opportunities and more clear cut opportunities. And when we do, we need to be far more clinical to start to see just Red card apiece, six yellow cards given. That's 12 total. And I think that was going to be very interesting. But now for the Oakland Roots, what does the reaction look like? And for FC Tulsa, big game coming up once again. And FC Tulsa is inside that line, 36 points. Detroit City at ninth. They're down 3 0 to Phoenix, so likely to stand inside the line when we are done across the league. Thanks so much for joining us here this evening. FC Tulsa, 1 0 the final for our entire team. And my broadcast partner, Ricky Lopez Espin. I'm Drew Casey saying so long. You've been watching USL Championship.
this copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.